Yeah. Hi, everybody. Um, first off, John, show them Red and Earl. Red and Earl flew in to visit us. Hi, guys. Come on over. Okay. We thought we'd give you an update on the garden. Um, Cause we've kind of not shown much of it, but we've been hit by aphids and tomato hornworms. The guineas loved us on the tomato hornworms. I'm surprised their eggs didn't turn into like tomato hornworm green. So you can see here the chomping of them, the chomping and chomping. And if you look real close, I'm sure you'll find some tomatoes that have been eaten. Oh, right over here. Oh, here's one of our friendlies right now. We'll have to save that. I'll take that over to the guineas when they come back. We've let them roam. So um, they come back in the evening to roost. And right here, the plant it's on right now is the Versage. And right next to the Versage, this is the Sunrise Bumblebee, the one that turns a real pretty orange and yellow. So our little bugs. Um, uh, and of course, I planted this really compact one. I wasn't sure it was going to work. Great big experiment. Red is now over there eating the habanero. Are you helping us out, girls and boys? So next year, I'm going to plant further apart. This is the blue cream berry. It's a really sweet tomato. This is what it looks like when it first comes out. This is like this and a little bit lighter. Here's the lighter ones. So, I like them. They're sweet. They're different. John, do you like them, honey? Um, I like them, but they, they turn so fast from like being perfect to not being perfect. Well, and, uh, not being perfect. It's just a little bit squishier yeah. for him. Um, I like them a little bit harder. But and if not you want so a real puffy. tomato taste, like in your salads and everything, in the cherry tomato, these probably aren't it because they're a little bit on the sweeter side and they don't give you that acidic tomato taste for your pasta salads or vegetable salads and stuff like that. But prolific, to say the least, you can see here. So many. And it's broken there. It's just fallen everywhere. It's taken over the Versage. Now the Versage I really like. Um, smaller, let's say medium sized tomatoes. Put your hand I'm, up to it. I'm really into the Versage. So we'll plant those again. How about the Sunrise Bumblebee? Did you like the little yellow ones? Um, yeah, those are good. I like those. And we'll probably plant just a red cherry or grape tomato. Hi Reda. You wanna be on you wanna be on the tape? You do? Okay. So uh, these, although truly prolific, I, I just can't get John to really... We can make some salsa off of these. It would be awesome. Well, it's pretty sweet. We've made some salsa off of them. Mm -hmm. Did mm. you like it? Mm -hmm. Okay. And so we cut back the okra because it was just a last minute thing. It is doing pretty good. Check this out. This is the great big kind of okra too, folks. This isn't because it's grown... I've let it. it I've let it overgrow. It's because this is the type it is. So I'm gonna pick those. We'll have some fried green okra. So that'll be good. Now the the capaya. This is a good tasting tomato. And see, I haven't been out here picking enough. Look at all of these. Also, I haven't been able to picking this year and canning this year was never part of the plan because living in the tiny little trailer. I don't have the space. I haven't wanted to turn on the AC. Although August has been pretty cool, um, just haven't wanted to mess with that. Basil, I'm gonna come out here and get some basil and make some pesto for us for sure. We'll pick this, John will make, I'll probably can a little bit of tomato so he can have two or three servings of our own tomatoes in his salsa for winter. We'll do that. I'll probably plant capaya again. I love the amana. We're, we're in love with the amana beef steak. Put your hand back down there. Well, just come over here and we'll show them this one. This is a beef steak. And we love the amana. Um, the hookah culture has worked wonderful. 
You can see who's been visiting here. The tomato hornworm. So um, we'll definitely do a much better job planting. Is that the chrysalis? A, here's a chrysalis. <clears throat> That's the hornworm baby. Well, it's going to turn into a moth. Well, Maybe give that to the guinea. Nah. I'd like to have the moth. The moth is beautiful. Okay, here's the black creme. I haven't been that impressed with the black creme for us. I think next year Cherokee purple is the way we'll go. Cherokee purple instead of the black creme. And again, I've got some great um, habaneros going. Yep. Great basil needs to be picked and used. Um, and then on around. Come out here and get some black creme. You can see we've allowed some to rot. Bad homesteaders, I know. My habaneros. Well, we're we just make, can't eat it that fast. <clears throat> and we're going to make some habanero shrub. I'll freeze some habaneros. The jalapenos. Check that out. We got the green jalapenos turning red. Uh-huh, because they need to be picked. Yeah. And over here. Got those over there. Yeah. And those right here, this is the mound that John still needs to get our backhoe, or our neighbor's backhoe. Kind of needs some type of hydraulic part. So we haven't gotten it all done, but he's getting this out of here for me so I can actually walk up here. And I'm not graceful, folks. And this isn't good for me to walk on. And the backside didn't need a mound on it anyway. No. no, no but no. we have, this is the Arkansas State Rock. I mean, state flower. It's called the rock. Everywhere you move dirt, it just rocks, rocks, rocks. Look at this stuff. Look at this stuff. Just big, big, big. Everywhere. It's the back side. Now, our little bitty lemon drop peppers. Let me climb over there. Oh, they're finally coming in. Well, they've been coming in. They just don't have enough sun to ripen. Okay? We love the lemon drops. We'll plant those again. And it's supposed so, to turn yellow here. Garden, garden's doing great. You know, I was worried about it, but no need. I have had to water. I watered um, Grab me one of those yellow last tuna. night. Oh, these are the sun, sun, sunrise bumblebees. Love those. I'm gonna yeah. have a couple of those. Yeah, so the, these will be replanted next year. So, grab me they a are couple. Good. You want one? Yeah, I want to. Let's go. Yeah. Mmm, 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 mmm. Wow. What a flavor. Mm-hmm. Now, come over here and I'll show you real quick. John did get most of the mound taken away from behind the... Poogle bed over here. We're just going to bring in some dirt that he's moving. There's a pile over there by our guinea. Our guineas are home. Um, There's pile, the guineas. We're going to bring some topsoil over here because that is good topsoil. Not as rocky. That's going to go here. We'll remove the rest of that. This bed will be ready to go for the spring along with that one. And here John has dug me two big trenches, four foot wide by 12 foot long. What this is gonna be is a raised hugel bed. I'm gonna put all the lumb, the wood, the leaves, the sticks, the, the compost, the manure down, and then I'm gonna build two raised beds, four foot by 12 foot, and then I've got a four foot passageway in between. And what I'm gonna do is in the middle of this four foot, what you doing, Retta? In the middle of this four foot bed and in the middle of that, I'll put a cow panel. Go over so I can have this winter a little greenhouse, hoop house with um, plastic on it. So I'll have two foot of the raised bed on the inside and I can grow lettuce to feed us. Our greens, all sorts of greens to feed us and the geese. Earl loves it, don't you Earl? So we'll feed the geese and the ducks and the chickens have some stuff for them and some stuff for us. And then on the outside will be two foot also. So we'll come. Uh-oh, 
Brother, are you okay, honey? That was crazy. So on the get back up here now. The, on on the outside of my cow panel, there's two foot. That'll be used to raise the beans and the peas and everything else that's going to climb up over the cow panels. And this will be my raised bed. And then he's going to build one more area for me next to the mulch pile. It's going to be 25 foot long, and that's where my blueberries will go. Spaced about four or five feet apart. I'll make that into a hoogle bed too. And... Um, Put the peat moss and all all the stuff the acidic stuff on top that'll be next as soon as big bertha gets fixed so that's an update and quite possibly the middle mound will mess with in the spring too um, i'll probably overseed it again with rye and some clover but things are looking up I'm getting it done. Uh, oh, one more thing. Come here and see these poor pathetic little cantaloupe or honeydews, not sure which. Which finally, this is the only thing, they need to be watered in a bad way, but look how cute they are. They're not going anywhere. Not warm enough. Too late in the season, but, you know, next to the guinea house. So come back, we'll show you how to make some um, habanero shrub with our hobs and uh, a few other things that we put up. Guys, go out and have a magical day. Bye.